Lyndon Arthur is back, ready to stake a claim for a shot at world glory when he takes on Argentina's Walter Gabriel Shekiera. Part of a huge night of action on Saturday, September the 17th. It's live and free on Channel 5. Razzle Manny for IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. Delighted to have with me on Zoom today after a little while. Uh, the head of sport and entertainment for Meta Visionary Visionaries, um, Spencer Ferron. Spence, how are you, how you mate? Doing, how you doing? How you doing? I'm good. Yourself? Ah, uh, alhamdulillah. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm. I mean, I'm pushing forward, so I'm, I'm happy. You know. It's good to hear. Um, Spence, quite a few things to catch up on. Um, let's start with kind of the hottest topic going around over the last 24 hours. Anthony Joshua and his team have accepted all terms for a fight with Tyson Fury on December the 3rd, which is looks looks like it's going to be Principality Stadium. Eddie Hearns done numerous interviews yesterday from Vegas, and he confirmed that we literally agreed to everything they wanted. Are we... Is this now going to be the time where we see this mega fight, or, or are we going to see someone just pull out? Um, I'm going to be honest with you, yeah? Whoever is advising Anthony Joshua to take that fight has not got Anthony Joshua's best interest at hand, but maybe they got their own interests at hand. Right? I'm saying it straight standard. You can see that Anthony Joshua needs to address certain things personally. He needs to address those things, right? And we're talking, and, and this is a thing where we're saying, like, when we're dealing with people's mental health issues, right? And mental health is now at the forefront of so many different aspects of human society that Anthony Joshua really needs to 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 take that on board and Josh's people around him need to take that on board right because you've got all the money a man could actually desire for you've got success you've got you've got wealth then you have to pertain that to your happiness you winning a fight or becoming a champion of the whole world that is not your happiness you know what I mean? Many times I could tell to people that happiness is not a destination, it's a way of life. It's the journey. That's where you get or acquire your happiness from. Anthony Joshua has not come through boxing with the fundamental basics like you'd see like an eight-year-old or a nine-year-old or a ten-year-old grow up in the sport. He's a man that is supremely athletically gifted, that has had, had got success, by how it seems to me, and I'm just going to be open and honest by it, it seems like they're saying, well, there's no other option. There are loads of different options. Anthony Joshua needs to realize that he has to champion life. It's life where you want to be the champion, right? And I'm just, I'm concerned by it. Just like when Tyson Fury had these mental issues and everything else and mental health issues, right? And then he came out and said, I've actually got mental health issues. And you could see that. My concern is this, right? Is that there has to be certain issues now why you say, well, I'm going to go take that fight. We go count. If you go count, what do we have? We had the Ruiz. We had the Ruiz fight. Then we have Ruiz again. He comes second best. He come, in the first fight, he comes second best. Second fight, he wins. Then um, he has the Pulev fight. Then he has the Usyk fight. Then he has the Usyk fight. Right? So, out of his last five fights, his last five fights, he's won two of them. So, how does that... And, and I'm a historian. I can go to history books. You have never seen nobody in the history of, of, of heavyweight boxing who has lost twice, back-to-back, -back, and then got a shot at the world title. So, why is so so right? And if that was the case, if we look at guys, who have come back and regained their titles. No person has lost twice on the spin after being a world champion, right? And won and come out successful. What would make Anthony Joshua so different say that you can make the change? And then you're going in with a man who can do 
m most of the things that Usyk can do, right? But we've never ever seen Usyk fight. Um, we've sorry, we've never ever seen Usyk fight um, um, orthodox. Tyson Fury could do both. You don't believe me? Go watch Tyson Fury against um, Martin Rogan. That's the first time I've seen Tyson Fury live. Remember, Clifton Mitchell's work in the corner. Tyson Fury boxed the whole fight southward. Right? The whole fight southward. And I remember sitting down watching this around. Tyson Fury's a bad boy, you know? So I'm saying, my concern is this. It's like, I'm talking, I'm, I'm saying this from, 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 from a compassionate side. Anybody turning around saying that they want to see that fight for Andy Joshua, it's like Andy Joshua is trying too hard to prove things to other people and needs to prove things to himself. Right? He's living at other people's desires. And yeah, people are going to say, oh, Spencer, how can you say that? You're cutting out. You're, oh, this. No. If you can't see that there's, some, there's, there's something that needs to be stabilized within Andy Joshua as a human being, then you're selfish. I don't want to see that boy get hurt, you know? I don't want to see him get hurt. He's a lovely human being. He's a very compassionate human being. So why is anyone going to sit down and say they want to go see Andy Joshua going to that fight? Now, you've lost those two fights. But it's got, that, it's got to be down to economics then. So if it's down to economics, that's still the biggest fight out there in the heavyweight division. So it's down to economics. So I can't take that. I can't take my humane side out and say, right, no, I don't think that you will be ready to fight Tyson Fury just like that. I think there's certain things and certain intrinsic things that you need to be applied to yourself first, then go and fight Tyson Fury, right? Then you know that there's been no stone unturned. You've gone, you've done everything you can do to secure victory. Because right now, there's confidence issues. Got to be there. You go drive a car 100 miles an hour, uh, uh, Raz, and go crash that car. I say, you go jump in the car again. I'm going to drive it 120 miles an hour now. You crash the car. Right? Go do it again. You could die. No, no. Show compassion to the kid. Stop. Let's not do it for our own desires. Yeah, I want to see that. I want to see that. Because what are we seeing it for? If we're looking at that, and anyone could be, you got to be real now. And I have to be 100% real. I do believe that Andy Joshua could beat Tyson Fury. Right? Because it's heavyweight boxing. But you're not going to beat Tyson Fury after two back to back losses. You're not going to be Tyson Fury when you're not seemingly there mentally. And when I tell people that boxing is about, it's, boxing is spiritual, right? I remember saying this to you about two years ago and people in the comments, oh, what are you talking about? Now Usyk's talking around saying, what, boxing is spiritual? What was Usyk doing right throughout the fight when he fought, when he fought um, Joshua in the second fight? What was he doing? The man was sitting down and he was praying. Boxing is spiritual, not religious. Right? Not religious. Spiritual based. So no, I'm not in agreement to that at all. Um, it's about preparation. And people will say, oh, what you I'm telling you now, anybody wanting to see Andy Joshua, who's in his team that want to go and see him fight Tyson Fury right now, do, does not care about his well-being. And I've said it. And that's my lot on IF, but I ain't speaking no more today. Just some just follow ups on that. You know, Eddie was asked yesterday about where does Anthony Joshua go if he was to lose f to Fury if they fought December third, and his response was that we would be in the same position as we are today. You know, he's lost twice to Usyk. You won't be in the same position. You will not be in the same position. And I'm going to tell you why you're not going to be in the same. You're, you're not going to be in the same position, yeah? Because it's going to take harder to rebuild. Eddie has never fought before. You know what I mean? He's an excellent promoter. You never fought before. Now, from your position, now I'm saying sit down and care about the youth. He's got enough money. He's got enough money. Care about the youth. It seems like people around him don't care about him. You saw his behavior after the fight. I understand that behavior, right? Because he has been living this facade of being, oh, you've got to be this, this, uh, uh, this, you're the golden child. You've got to be, and he's been protected over certain things, got into a position where, oh, maybe he should have gone into, but he got into those positions and he capitalized on those positions. He capitalized on, on those positions and has given us great, fantastic fights. Right now, Anthony Joshua needs to go back and learn.
the proper fundamentals of boxing. That's what Anthony Joshua needs to do. Anthony Joshua needs, and even though he's sitting down, you can watch all the tapes that you want, all the fights that you want. It depends who's around you when you're sitting down watching those fights. You know what I mean? Go sit down around scholars and learn this thing. Right now, no. When you say we're in the exact same position, you won't be in the same position. You know why? Because he was to go and fight against Tyson Fury and come up second best. That'd be three back-to-back -back losses, right? He'll be broken from that. If he's not broken already, he'd be broken right now. No. 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 I'm mm -hmm. telling you this now. And I'll say this exactly the same thing. If Tyson Fury had lost two times, and with that entire security's ability to go and continue to fight and everything else, I'll say exactly the same thing. You don't need that fight right now. You know what I mean? And I'm not going to sit back for no selfish greedish reason and say, yeah, let that fight go on and blah, blah, blah. It's going to be great. You know what I mean? And no. That's where I'm coming from. And I don't business who wants to be upset by me or what I'm saying. I don't care what anyone says in the comments. I don't business. And you know why I don't business? Because I don't, I don't scare of these these frickle things. It's, 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 trust me. I just don't want to see Andy Joshua get hurt because obviously you can see there was something that is not right. And why ain't nobody around him telling him something ain't right, we need to fix things? Or is it all about the pay? Let me tell you this, the next thing. Andy Joshua should do this, right? Andy Joshua should do this. I was reading a, I was reading a book the other day, um, the, the Secret Millionaire Mindset, right? Andy Joshua should do this. Pay people on results-based. Everybody around you, pay their own results, right? Just like you go to someone at Lehman Brothers, at Goldman Sachs, at you go at all these big companies, right? They pay people on results. So really and truly, you get a minimal pay. You get minimal pay, and then on for the back of results, then you get a big bonus dividend. Because if you did that, then you know what? People have said, boy, well, maybe I ain't going to get up because that means they don't want it once. If you're working with a camp or a team, they must have to want it equally, if not even more than what you want. I see the other day Angel Fernandez saying, oh, well, uh, if we'll definitely be, we'll definitely be him in the third, if he were to fight Usyk the third time. Third time, you've had two times to try. What kind of joke thing is that, bro? Don't get me upset today. Don't get me, no, seriously. I'm just, no, I'm just telling you straight standards. I don't care who wants to like what I say. I don't business who likes me. You know why? Because I've got love in my household. So, but, but, but Spence, look, I understand your points, but what if, and I'm saying what if, I don't know Andy Joshua like you. I don't know his team members like you know them. But what if, what if it is about the money? What if it is about capturing as much money as we can now, because we don't know if this Fury fight will ever happen in the future, because Fury is so unpredictable, like he retires and unretires. And I'm going to say this again. You have to put principle over paper. You have to put morals over money. And you have to put class over cash. Anti Joshua can't spend the money he's got. He's got a bag of money, right? It's not about the money with him. We have spoken. When when he came back second best against the Usyk fight recently, as he landed back in for me, we had a really good heart to heart. I props Andy Josh for that heart to heart. You know what I mean? I props him for that. We had a really really good talk. And you know what he said? His major thing. He said, "I've, I've let down people. I've let down the greats." This is what he said to me. You know? I said, "How have you let down the greats?" He said, "I've let down people. Who believed in me, Spence." Then I'm saying, stop for a second. Is your mom secure? He said, yep. Is your sister secure? He said, yes. Is your child secure? He said, one million percent. So therefore, you've accomplished what you're meant to accomplish. This game is called the prize fighting. Prize fighting is a prize, and the prize aesthetically, historically, when we think about it, especially from, through the heavyweight championship, since John L. Sullivan, right? Culminating the massive change, and a massive change of money when real money started to come into the game, like ridiculous amounts of money started to come to game was when Jack Dempsey reigned supreme, right? The money is the allure that we're saying that's why we're doing it for, yeah? 
But Anthony Joshua, when we spoke, he was talking about he wanted to secure a legacy to be respected as a great champion. And I'm saying, for what you have done and what you've accomplished, you're already a great champion. Because you ain't meant to have done the things that you have done. I want you to realize this, you know. I know many a heavyweight of, from Great Britain who've been far more technically superior to Anthony Joshua. Far more. I don't want to reel off no names. Far more. They have not accomplished what he, what he has accomplished. Right? Trust me on that. Technically, I go back in time. Derek Williams, former um, European champion and former Commonwealth champion, was amazingly talented. Danny Williams, who was like my shadow. I was his shadow when I was growing up as a kid. Was amazingly talented. Amazingly talented. Audley Harrison, talented. People, my Audley, Audley was not talented. I could keep on going on and going on and going on when it comes to talent of guys who come out here, right? David Hay was more talented than, than Andy Joshua. I'm letting you know that. David Hay was one of the most naturally talented human beings on the planet when it came to boxing, the artistry of boxing, the things that he could go and do. Plus, he was a ridiculous puncher, right? He ain't accomplished the things that Andy Joshua has done, especially not in the monetary sense, right? So... That is a blessing. So you've been blessed. You've been blessed, bro. Right now, it's time for you to sit back, realize your blessings, right? Realize your blessings and not just count your blessings, but live them. You going out and fighting um, um, Tyson Fury right now, you have to know what is the reason behind why you're fighting him or you're chasing this thing because you're chasing it because you just lost. Relax. You carry on, keep on winning. Belief. You have to believe in yourself. You taking this fight right now, that's not showing me that you believe in yourself. You know what I mean? Believing in yourself is leaving no stone unturned. And this here is like, oh, well, it's been offered, so we're going to take it. No, bro. I've said what I've said, man. Spencer Ferron, IFL TV, thank you very much. <laughs>